there we go. And it's 10 past, so I'm assuming that everyone is back who's coming, who is coming back. I know Councillor Cave is, uh, has dropped out. So moving on to uh, the next one on the list, which is um, 2020-01590, oblique HYB, land south of Llandoc Hill and Panath Road, Llandoc, if you um, I think Ian, this is one of your. No, Steve, this nope, is one it's of me, yours. Me, Stephen, yeah, sorry, I apologise. Yeah, yeah. Stephen, it's one of yours. Can you introduce it, please? Okay. Um, so, um, so the site itself is a 4.2 uh, hectare um, area of land on the northeastern edge of Landock. Um, it's next to the uh, Penoth Road, uh, located to the northwest of the site, and Landock Hill is located to the north. And Cogan Pill Road is located uh, to the to the south. Um, it, it's a it, it is a, a a site which contains quite quite significant proportion of tree cover, uh, and in particular the site also slopes quite steeply uh, upwards from Penarth Road towards uh, Cogan Pill Road. And it's also worth noting that the site is in the settlement boundary uh, for Landock. Uh, not only is it in the settlement boundary, it's actually a, an allocated uh, housing site. And it forms part of a slightly larger site, which includes the the former reservoir located to the which adjoins the southeast part of the site. So it's a bit of a complicated application. It's what's called a hybrid uh, planning application. Um, it comprises of two elements: an outline element and a and a full application element. So slightly similar to the application we, we previously heard. Um, the outline element is for the provision of 133 dwellings. Um, in addition to access, um, which is which for consideration, um, which is, so access is being submitted as part of the outline application, but all other matters are reserved. So the site itself, if we just zoom in a little bit, is split into two parts, which they are calling uh, plateaus effectively. So, so really to develop the site out, they've got to create a higher plateau and a lower plateau. Um, <clears throat> So the, um, the the lower plateau uh, will provide um, 100 uh, units and the upper plateau, uh, 33 houses. So the site's been sort of divided where there's a higher density uh, development along the northern part of the site, which uh, which fronts onto Penarth Road and lower density on the southern part of the site, which fronts onto to Cogan Pill Road. So indicatively as submitted there are 59 uh, one-bed flats 41 two-bed flats uh, 14 three-bed flats and 19 um, four bedroom houses um, so the blocks of flats are proposed to be between three and five stories in height which is between nine and 18 meters in height and the houses uh, are proposed to be either two story split level or um, two to three story and they're at a height of uh, between seven and 12.5 meters. So the full planning application is sought for the construction of what is the internal uh, access road, um, which also provides, zoom on here, a new junction uh, with Landock, uh, Landock Hill. And um, really that's, um, as much as I want to say, really. So, so the layout really shown in front of you is is very indicative. The only thing that is is fixed effectively is the location of the road. Um, I'll just quickly show you the um, the parameter plans um, just for a bit of context. So these show the the, the, the developable areas. Um, the the blue the, the red line is the area that's subject to the road, and the this plan is quite a useful plan and it's which has been circulated. It sets out the um, the, the the parameters uh, which show that see, part of the lower, the northern part is three storey, then it links to five storey, then you've got kind of intermediate two and three storey, and then you've got the lower two storey. Um, just, just to say on this application, we have had um, a matters arising note. Uh, this is from uh, Mr. Max Wallace, uh, submitted by a councillor Carroll. Um, Mr. Wallace has been raising concern in relation to effectively drainage matters on the scheme. Um, the, the matters rising notes been circulated to members yesterday, um, officers, uh, the case officer and the um, drainage officer have provided uh, a very detailed response um, 
addressing all of the matters raised by uh, Mr Wallace and I hope members have uh, taken the, the opportunity to, to read those um, responses. In addition to that, we've also made an action which is to amend condition five, which effectively adds in the flood consequence assessment into the approved plan list on the, um, and similarly amend condition 39 to also include the flood consequence assessment. So, so the recommended decisions are split into two parts. The first part of the outline conditions and the second part would be the, the full application. So there's a lot of conditions in there that are replicated because um, you know the road could effectively be built in isolation to the reserve reserve matters part. So uh, that might look like a lot of duplication in the, the recommendations. But um, that's it for for now, Chairman. I'm happy to uh, see you come back as and when. Thank you, Steve. Thank you. Um, the only person who's indicated that they want to speak at the moment, I think, on this is Councillor Carroll, who's the local member. So, George, if you're there. Um, yes, thank you, Chair, and thank you for the yeah. opportunity. To same, same rules apply, I'm afraid, George. Three minutes and and uh, and so on, I believe. Yeah, no, I will um, make a start then. Um, as um, members will be aware from the papers, the community of Landock has serious concerns about this application. I think most clearly demonstrated by the fact that over 100 letters of objection were submitted. Now, I myself submitted detailed objections at both the application and pre-application stage, the details of which are set out in the papers. So I won't go through them in full because time will preclude me from doing so. But I would like to take the opportunity to draw the committee's attention to specific concerns relating to drainage at and near this site. Anybody who is familiar with Landock Hill will be aware of considerable water discharge at the top and bottom of the hill. Recently, the council at some cost into um, constructed an interceptor drain to help address this problem. But at the bottom of the hill, there is significant discharge near to the property York Lodge, which is directly opposite the site in question and just metres from the development. This then, in periods of heavy rainfall, discharges water onto Penarth Road, which is a severe flood risk. Now, Given these visible and well-documented issues, I was astonished to see that this application was recommended for approval. The site in question is to all intents and purposes a green space. Concreting it over has two effects or will have two effects. First and foremost, it will potentially put these properties at risk from flooding. And secondly, it has the potential to exacerbate the existing drainage issues as a result of the loss of green space that currently absorbs water in the area. Now, I passed on concerns regarding the drainage that was submitted to me by a third party. While I'm grateful to officers for addressing them, I um, still have serious concerns about the drainage on the site. And so I would at the very least request that the de decision is deferred so that these can be properly addressed. If the application is approved, and I very much hope it isn't, then significant and sizable Section 106 contributions will be required to compensate the community. But as I said, for the reasons I've outlined, I would strongly urge the committee to reject this application. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Carroll. Are there, <coughs> oh, no, the, 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 there aren't any points of clarification or, or, or are there? Councillor Penn, you have your hand up. Is that for a point of clarification? Um, no, it was just um, ha ha having lived here and uh, been on Landock Community Council when this came sorry, up chair, previous. Sorry, sorry, no, I apologise. I forgot. E Elliot, you're not a member of the, of the committee, uh, therefore, uh, but you can speak as a you can speak as a uh, as a member of the council. So uh, you have your hand up and can therefore speak as a, a, a as a councillor. You have three minutes, the same as uh, same as George. Thanks, chair. <clears throat> Sorry, I apologise for that. that was... That's all right. Um, this, as, as a resident of Landock um, and a former member of Landock Community Council, this came up previously um, in pre-app stage. Um, being a builder, I was looking at this um, and I have to say the, the mitigations over flooding satisfied 
uh, my concerns um, at the time, um, I think I was a lone voice or possibly uh, a, a, there was only a small uh, amount of voices on the community council who were in favour of this or weren't actually against it, but not actually in favour. Um, I walk my son to school on Landock Pill quite often, um, and I would be sad to see that green space go, but with the pressing need of housing um, and the mitigating, uh, uh, the mitigations over flooding, um, I don't have a problem with it as being a resident and a former community councillor. Um, it would have been nice to have seen a wider buffer, bit a green buffer between Cogan Pill and the housing, um, to keep a, a, a sense of Cogan Bill being uh, more wild. Um, but um, I would say, based on the documents I've looked at, um, it seems um, a, a, a reasonable. Um, proposal that the scheme does. Thanks, Chair. That's all I wanted to say. Thank you, Councillor Penn. Right. There being no other speakers from outside, uh, Stephen, I don't know whether you want to address the issues raised by Councillor oh, yeah. Carroll. I'm happy to. And, and Councillor Penn. So just, just starting with Councillor uh, Carroll's uh, comments. Um, you know, we're certainly not underestimating the the, the, the strength of, of local opposition. I believe over 100 letters of objection received, um, you know, wide ranging, particularly with concerns in relation to drainage, but also in relation to uh, facilities within Landock, etc. Um, just from a starting point, again, as I said in my introduction, this, this is an allocated site. So this site has already been, if you want to call it that, tested by a planning inspector as part of the hearing sessions for the LDP. So the inspector would have had specific hearing sessions on all of the allocated sites and would have looked at the sites, whether they're appropriate to develop, um, whether there are any constraints that would prevent development or providing the, the appropriate level of density. Um, so from our point of view, it, it's gone through. It, it's almost as if, if by being an allocated site, the principle has already to some degree been accepted. Um, but nevertheless, things do change on site, and you know this is one of the latter sites in the LDP that uh, an LDP allocation that's 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 come forward at a relatively late stage in, in the LDP. Um, so just in terms of um, drainage, uh, you know we know you know we're not disputing there are issues. If you went particularly looking at the rain now, if you went down to Penarth Road in the bottom of Landock Hill, you'd probably see water running down. Um, the drainage engineer accepts that, officers accept that. Um, that's an, that is the existing situation. So um, I, I know request has been made to defer um, from Councillor Carroll to defer the application in order to um, fully consider and provide more details in respect of drainage. But what we must emphasise is that um, the detailed drainage scheme will be under the SAB authority. So I don't know whether members know, but historically um, drainage was dealt with under the planning system, but the new provisions of the of Schedule 3 of the Flood and Water Management Act set up um, SAB bodies to specifically deal with surface water and so specifically to deal with sustainable drainage on all new developments and also in, to ensure that that drainage was adopted and then may, therefore maintained. So it's a much, much higher level. So by no means are we saying that drainage is, is not an issue. In fact, the, you know, it's a SAB scheme. The SAB the SAB application goes through the same sort of process, plans, documents, technical information, and they would then assess the application the same way that offices would. So, um, you know, nevertheless, you know, we've had, as, as the, the late rep, sorry, matters were being circulated, we, we have had a flood, you know, a detailed flood consequence assessment with the application and also a drainage statement. So, say, the drainage engineers, in respect of the general strategy and the way that the site is going to be dealing with um, surface water and greenfield runoff, et cetera, they're happy um, with the level of detail that we've got at the moment, but they fully accept and it's stated in our matters rising note that the final drainage strategy will require approval by the SAB. So um, it's really just to emphasise that 
we are not here to consider the final um, finite detail of how drainage will work on this site. It's it's down to the SAB um, authority. In an ideal world, you can you can deal with a SAB application in parallel and tandem with a planning application. But invariably, SAB process is a very costly process and inevitably developers like to get planning permission in first before they can um, progress to, to a SAB scheme. But it might be the case of um, if, for example, planning permission is granted, that the scheme might have to be amended in future to accord with the, the SAB requirements. So, for example, while, whilst there's an indication of attenuation basin, that would have to be subject to much more detailed calculations and assessments and the depth of that basin may well change. So it's, it's all about the really, really technical detail which the SAB authority would deal with as a totally separate application. So whilst I understand Councillor Carroll's concern and the concern of the wider um, um, uh, community, um, you know, the fact there is a separate SAB process, you know, it, it's a very, very rigorous process to go through. And I, I can assure you that they, they wouldn't be given sort of SAB approval with, without um, the, the, the council SAB team being fully satisfied that the that the scheme kind of wipes its own face in respect of surface water runoff. Um, but equally, we're not here to fix, they're not there to fix an existing problem. It's just to mitigate the impacts of their own development. And that's, that's quite an important uh, thing to state. It's not the role of the developer to fix, you know, external problems, just to accommodate development within the site. Um, just on, on the, the comments uh, by, um, by Councillor Elliott, um, again, in, in terms of, um, he likes to walk the dog there, uh, just going back to my previous comment that this is a, a long-standing uh, housing allocation. I, I know sort of people see it as a, as a, a bit of a, a, a green a green line, undeveloped space as you sort of drive up Penoff Road to get into the, the, the Barons Court roundabout, but it, it's, it's a long-standing site uh, that the inspector has accepted is appropriate for residential development. It's unfortunate because the site, I would just share my um, plan, which shows a couple of cross sections through the site, which I think are quite useful in, I mean, I certainly understand the, the concern about whether or not the development could be sort of brought off the off the boundaries, particularly on uh, the Kogan Pill, Pill Road, which is a, is a, a, a cycleway footway is also a, an NCN route as well, but um, the the levels are so difficult and, and it's dominated by the, the, the sort of geometry of the road having to wind its way up and to create these um, level plateaus just to try and just to try and get those housing numbers in, um, you know, requires these dwellings to be, you know, brought back as much as they can be. But nevertheless, we're still securing a, a scheme of, of tree planting. And that's why effectively on the um, Penarth Road side, the, say that the development is much higher density. So we've recognised the fact that Penarth Road is, is much more urban, especially what you when you look at what is opposite the site, um, hence why the flatted blocks are on the Penarth Road side and the, the lesser density is on the, the Cogan Pill, Pill side. So you know we, we think nevertheless, in terms of the general layout and the, the, what they're proposing indicatively, um, you know, is it, certainly going to work, but obviously that's still subject to a reserve matters application that would look at the final detail of exact siting and design, etc. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Steve. Right, we have three hands up at the moment. Councillor Ernest. Anthony. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Yes, sorry about that. You caught me on the hop. Um, <laughs> Chairman, I, I've listened with great interest to the, uh, the local member and the um, and Councillor Penn as well, who who apparently still lives there. Um, I, I take note of what they say about the drainage and I'm not going to refer to those. What I am going to refer to firstly, Chairman, is the density of the housing, proposed housing development. 100 units fronting Panath Road and 33 houses on the upper level of the site. Now, for those who don't know th the area particularly well. Penarth Road is an A-class road uh, serving uh, Cardiff to Barry, Dennis Powys and Penarth. Um, there is a railway line, the other side of the main road, which again serves the Vale of Glamorgan line and the Penarth line. There is a train every, every uh, five or ten minutes up and down from Penarth and the Barry line as well has a similar frequency. And of course, there are goods, goods trains going through as well, as well as it's a diversionary route for the London to Swansea trains. 
So it's a noisy environment. That's the point I'm trying to make. Many thousands of cars every hour use Penarth Road. Let's look at the, uh, and one of the things about it as well, this site is opposite a car showroom and also an entertainment venue. So a very pleasant outlook, I would suggest, for those who are going to be in the flats on the front of the site on the roadside. The amenity space, I'm not sure just yet what sort of level of amenity space is going to be given to this development. As Stephen rightly tells us, um, this is a hybrid application, so these matters can be looked at later on. But I would suggest that in the nature of 100 units uh, of flats, even if they were one person or two person, there'd be a lot of amenity space required on the site. Um, the loss of landscaping, there's the report touches on the number of trees on the site, most of which will be removed, as I can see it. There may be a small buffer, but a lot of those will be removed. And I think that is another matter of concern for those who enjoy, um, you know, having some sort of trees and green grass in the area rather than concrete. And lastly, Chairman, um, the type of construction. Basically, as we've heard in the report, they're going to be blocks of flats. Now, if you go along Penarth Road, it's not particularly attractive road. It's a busy road. It's a busy commuter road. They're mostly single storey factory units. I mentioned the car showroom and so on. And then quite suddenly you will have maybe three, four storey blocks of flats. Is this really an appropriate site for such a high scale development? I don't doubt the, the need for the development and I understand it being in in the LDP. That's not the argument. The argument is really, is this an appropriate site for such large scale development? I would suggest, Chairman, that it's not. And for that reason, I will not be supporting the application should we go to a vote. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Ernest. Um, next up is Councillor Buckley. Thank you, Chair, and thank you, Stephen. Um, the I'd like to say, uh, in regards to what Elliot said, uh, the map that you you uh, put up originally, the the upper plateau houses backing onto Cogan Pill Road. Um, there's commuting and foraging bats going back and forth along there, and although Natural Resources Wales didn't raise any objections, our own council ecologist recommends the retention of vegetation along Cogan Pill Road. So I, I don't think we'd be able to allow for that with those the properties on the upper plateau staying where they are. Along with uh, George's comments about the flooding, I know you've covered it and it's got to go to SAB and uh, they'll make all the recommendations on that. The SAB stuff doesn't cover the road as it is. Um, they they make reference to the, the building site being on a zone B flood risk and parts of the site are zone two. Zone three, I know that they've um, they put an attenuation basin in with approximately half a million litre capacity. And they're saying that the proposed culvert could cope with a once in a hundred year event. Well, the roads at the moment can't cope with a once in a once every couple of months event, let alone a once in a hundred years. So the I know I know the drainage stuff comes in the um the SAB stuff and doesn't affect our granting permission um, in theory for the, the uh, development to go ahead. But I think the, the upper plateau dwellings encroach too close to um, Cogan Pill Road. Um, it's taking up too much greenery there. Thank you. Thank you, Ian. Um, do you want to address these now, Stephen? Yeah, or there's, shall we move yeah, on? Um, I'm going to say quite, quite a few issues. Hands up. I'll, yeah. I'll, um, if I just start off on the visual impact side from um, Penarth Road, uh, just let me share my screen. So, I mean, I mean, at the, I mean, it, it's it's going to result in a marked change. We, we we can't ignore that fact. So. Um, 
you know, you've got fields that surprisingly, actually, I thought it was the site is actually steeper than it is, but they're almost at a grade behind here and then rise up significantly at the back. Um, but what you've got to look at is the, you know, there are a number of, you know, there are two story buildings and there are two story buildings significantly built up on a plinth as well. So, you know, it's a very kind of peripheral industrial urban fringe, the sort of development that you find on kind of outlying sort of peripheral distributor roads, really. Um, so, you know, again, the site is, has, you know, the inspectors looked at the site. He he would have considered the relationship of the site to adjoining housing and to, to the, the site opposite. Um, so it's been really uh, it's been a really difficult site to to look at because um, don't get me wrong, you know, there are a number of trees on the site and, you know, uh, the starting point from from planning point of view is to try and screen development um, and reduce the number of trees where absolutely possible. Uh, you know there are the trees that are going to have to come out out on the site frontage, but say the report quite robustly deals with um, you know replacement tree planting. Again, this is the the layout that's shown is all indicative. So um, you know when we get the final if if outline permission is granted and reserve matters does come in that you know there may well be an opportunity to retain some of these trees but actually if you look at them whilst as a whole they might appear sort of a, a dense tree screen a lot of it is it's sort of quite sort of um sporadic growth and sort of poor quality specimens so actually if you look at the quality of potentially what's being removed it's not that it's not significantly higher quality just on the, the point about noise um you know absolutely that that that's an issue uh we wouldn't won't dispute dispute that Penarth Road is, you know, is a, is a main peripheral distributor road out of Cardiff. Um, and similarly to the previous application we've heard, uh, Environmental Health have looked at the application and there will be a requirement for um, noise attenuation within the within the rooms. Again, because it's an outline application, there's a chance for the properties to be designed in such a way that the, the sort of primary living accommodation may well face in towards the site. Um, and the sort of the, the, the more bathrooms, et cetera, might might face onto the road. But equally, we've got to be careful that we're not creating sort of dead frontages along this road frontage. Um, so, again, the, it, all of that will be subject to um, if, if outline is, permission is granted, all of that will be subject to um, a reserve matters uh, consideration. Uh, I can't remember many of the other uh, matters that were raised really. I say drainage, we, you know, officers are quite satisfied that uh, drainage has, has been fully covered. Um, sorry, if, we, if someone wants to come back and ask me a specific question, I am, um, I'm happy to do that. Uh, Ian, Ian you, you put your hand back at Ian Buckley. I mean, there was a question that you did ask that you wanted answered. Yeah. I and Steve, I, I appreciate you've you've answered the question on the trees on Panath Road, but the retention of vegetation along Pill, Pogan Pill Road is the lane up at the top. Yes, the sorry, yes, at the bottom. yeah. Yeah. Um, Agree. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for that. Yeah. Sorry. It I, again. It it's. I think as as we said originally, it's been really difficult in order to. Get this allocated site developed out, and because of the the, the road and the, the levels, etc. Um, to to, to um, we are retaining what we can along the road frontage, but it has to. We have to accept that we're going to lose quite a lot of um, trees along along this frontage. But what I think the reference is made to NRW. NRW haven't objected to the application, so they, I think there were two potential trees with with potential bat roost, but none of those are going to be affected by development. I think one is in this this what is basically the main wooded area of the site, and the other is on the site frontage, and that that other tree has since diminished quite significantly. So um, you know, yes, absolutely, there are you know bat flight paths along these 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 routes. It's a very difficult balance because, for example, highways point of view, we want this is the national cycle route. We want to encourage and facilitate the use of this route and see that this. Sorry, can I just share? I thought I was sharing my screen. Um, uh, share that. Sorry, I hope you can see that now. So the scheme in, indicatively shows these connection routes into Cogan Pill Road, which is a, 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 an NCN route. But as part of that, highways actually want to see that road upgraded. 
So equally, we're also being asked from a highway point of view to provide lighting. Now there is a requirement for lighting that we which we've asked for, but that has to be kind of bat friendly lighting. But again, it's all it's all the balance of um, yes, we might be losing trees along this frontage, but again, it's an it's an allocated site. Um, so we, uh, just just to try and concentrate on on trees a little bit. So the report does go into that in some detail under page uh, 103, I believe. Um, the, this is effectively the main clump of woodland within the site. There are certainly other three groups within the site, some of which will be lost. Um, but the, the conditions have been very difficult to write because even though the tree groups that have been surveyed that are going to be lost, we don't know how many trees are in that group. Um, so the condition looks at providing trees of what we consider as an appropriate density. So, for example, the trees that might be within the middle portion of the site, in reality, they might be quite young and might be quite high density, but whether they would ever get to maturity, no one really knows. So we feel that with appropriate scheme of tree replacement to an appropriate density, together with the management of that area, will, from our point of view, mitigate the impact on the loss of the trees um, through through this part of the site. So I so say the officers worked really, really hard on this and trying to, to get back Although this is indicatively as much tree planting uh, as can be show, uh, that we can really, you know, feasibly get. Um, there is another plan that. Um, sorry about this. Yeah, the. Uh, so this is quite a useful plan again, which shows perhaps more positively the area for ecological purposes. So. So again, this this area of woodland is going to now be managed together with what will be the replanted areas uh, here, here and here. So, so actually, when you look at the developable areas, proportionally in terms of the whole site, it, you know, it, it by no means is it particularly significant. It's unfortunate that the road is quite a big engineering structure to to get access to the um, to the upper level plateau. Um, and it, you know, and again with the you know the need for a, a, quite a large attenuation basin at the bottom of the site, but it's really a site of two halves. You know, the way we offices feel, we've we've got low density, two storey stroke, two three storey at the southern part of the site, fronting onto Cogan Hill Road, and then more appropriately, the more urban scale development, which which um, not unashamedly sort of fronts onto Penarth Road, and you know will be quite visible, and you know we're happy for that you know fit to be visible and not necessarily screened and actually fronts onto it again you know this layer is going to be subject to detailed consideration as to how these blocks will actually look and uh, the fenestration etc cetera, etc cetera. but it's really the only way to try and get that density up to um appropriate standards in the ldp and obviously in line with future wales etc to <clears throat> make sure this this site is developed out in a meaningful uh, and efficient way okay i can uh, i'm happy to pass you back now oh, chairman, oh, uh, um, can you hear me chairman Sorry, I got my mic turned off. Yeah, and next next hand up is uh, Councillor Payne, Helen. Sorry about that. Thank you. Yeah, I've been waiting patiently. Yeah. Um, so I I think um Stephen, you've kind of answered a lot of my things. And um, one was around the pro close proximity to the reservoir, but I was looking at just at the plan then. Um, there's going to be access to the reservoir end. Is that correct? I got that right on the plans. Yes. Yeah, so um. Let me reshare my plan. It, it's a it's a difficulty we have with a lot of um, allocated sites, particularly where the site covers two owners, or it might have been an original owner, and then the site then gets sold yeah. off. So, so again, officers have sought to ensure that the the road comes up to the edge of the site to facilitate as much as it can the deliver the you know should an application come forward in, in, in you know, in the future in the reservoir site. In reality, yeah. it's a very, because of the site, of what it is, the cost of developing that site in relation to the number of units within it could be quite significant in terms okay. of remediation and et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, officers have done all they can to certainly facilitate access into joining site. Brilliant, thanks. And the other one was the play areas. Yeah, so the- Kind of out the way and next to a main road. So I wondered about. Um, okay, so 
so so that so there is I'm not sure. So the, the main play area is is actually on the kind of the inner the inner Cambridge, if you want to call it that, of, yeah. of the road. So that's the that's the local area of uh, play, which is is you know we're proposing that as the, the sort of the focus of the development. Um, so um, again, it, it's a difficult site. It's been a difficult site to develop, but you know the idea is that there's this sort of winding sort of footpath that that runs up to the side of it to provide more direct routes and connectivity. But it's pretty centrally located. The difficulty is yeah. it would either be at the top or the bottom, and whichever one you choose it would be difficult for the other side of the site to, uh, to access it. So, you know, officers do feel that this is relatively well um, located. And also it's, it's in a, you know, in a prominent, you know, a prominent location and forms a bit of a sort of focal point for the site as well. Yeah. And for me, it's about the quality of the play area as well, not just oh, absolutely. the sighting. Yeah. yeah. We, so, we, we, you know, they're, they're, some developments yeah. have one little boingy thing for, you know, children, they have age appropriate stuff. They tend to do lots of toddler stuff. Well, you know, children do grow. So, you know, yeah, it's the not quality of the play play equipment and stuff is important. Yeah, as absolutely. Well. I mean, you know, we've been delivering some really high quality play equipment recently and it, you know, yeah. it's no longer it's no longer springy chickens and, and slides. It's that's right. I'm thinking of the Bendrix. I was looking at that one the other day. They've got two nice play areas on the, yeah, on the new so, development. You know, we 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 work really well with our um with our, our countryside team who part of, of that uh, did, you know develop develop out these schemes so you know there is a condition and it's also part of the section 106 so it's part certainly part of section 106 to yeah. provide details of play areas so certainly you know we're going to be seeking the the, the highest quality player that, that we feasibly can in relation to the scale of development brilliant and the third one you've already answered and that that was kind of on ian's point about it's quite dense when you go down the lane there it's really like green and lush it's like you know a chime like a valley of trees. So my thing was about retaining lots of the this quite dense vegetation on the roadside, but you've kind of answered that anyway. So thank you. Thank you, thank you Helen, Councillor Payne. Next hand up is Councillor Hodges. Nick. Yeah, thank, thank you, Chairman. Um, there's a couple of things really. I mean, we started talking about um, flooding and flood mitigation and uh, water coming down and everything like that. Um, I, I think I have to say it that the planning committee does not always get it right on flooding. I mean, let's look at the states currently a part of the new waterfront here in Barry. I'll, I'll just leave that one there. Um, but I would warn councillors that the when we are discussing the revised LDP, um, where do I start? Uh, there are consequences down the line if if a scheme is uh, agreed and put into future potential plans as this one was in 2017 then there are consequences um, councillors who are still on this council voted for that and are now unhappy with various plans including this one and that's on you George but I'll leave it at that um, what I would say is we seem now, and I, I, we've got a number of examples here tonight, we seem really to be scratching for sites to develop. We really, really do. And the decisions that we're having to make are becoming more and more unpalatable, and in some cases quite distasteful. Um, I really feel that we need to develop our brownfield sites better and there's not many of those around either anymore. I, I really feel that we're, we're coming to a situation where, and I follow the, I, I understand the, 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 the conversation, we need to provide so many units. Well, we were set that target, um, gosh, 11 years ago or whatever it was. Um, surely we must be rapidly approaching that because we've virtually done everything we can now in Barry, and we've still got three or four years of the the plan still ahead of us so i really wonder just where and where we're going to go in future with with candidate sites and it really worries me i don't like this scheme i think it takes out a a natural historical um green lung and space uh, it is uh, in the context of a small wooded valley leading down from um, land dock down to what effectively is cardiff um, 
I worry about it. I don't like it. Um, and I'm struggling with many of these schemes that are coming before us. I'll oppose it, Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Hodges. Uh, Ian Robinson, um, do you want to respond particularly to that before I call Thanks. everyone else in? Thanks, Chair. Just because the, the timing is quite um, is quite good because um, it's it's responding to points that that Councillor Hodges has made about the LDP and it's and it's it, it's good points um, which which need to be addressed. So, I think obviously this, the the site we looked at just now wasn't wasn't an allocation. It was it was what would be known as a windfall site, the one in the one in Barry. This is an allocation. Um, yeah, we are in the latter part of our plan period, um, and I think. It's probably no surprise that the sites we're seeing now, you know, in, in respect of this one in Flandock, um, they are potentially the more constrained sites. Um, the ones that are easier to develop um, came forward first. Um, I mean, different sites have different constraints to, you know, to do with ownership and, and what have you. But this is a site which does have constraints on it, and it's probably no surprise that it's coming forward in in the la in the latter part of the plan period. Um, Again, I'd agree about finding sites is difficult. It's really difficult to find brownfield sites. It's really difficult to find sites within settlements, and and we've seen that recently through the um through the candidate site process. We have delivered well on the allocations in the LDP. Um, so we met Welsh government recently, and they said that us and I think one other council had you would say have delivered kind of on our strategy in terms of our, our housing. Many, many councils haven't been able to for one reason or another, viability on sites, etc. But once we get to the end of this plan period, we've got, we've got the next plan period that we're going to be looking at within the um, in the replacement LDP, and Welsh government will continue to expect us to deliver a level of growth. And what the right level of growth is 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 a matter of judgment. And we've had some engagement sessions with members recently about you know how you can model different scenarios to justify different levels of growth and what's appropriate, you know, bearing in mind our relationship to Cardiff and, and things like that. But we are in the growth area in, in, in future Wales, and that's been confirmed by Welsh Government. And if you're in the growth area, there will be an expectation of a level of growth. So just building out our, our allocation as our current LDP isn't enough <laughs> forever. It, you know, the, the housing needs and affordable housing need goes on, and there will need to be more sites. And if this allocation that's been, as Steve said, tested through the, the, the LDP process, notwithstanding its constraints, if this, if this allocation is deemed not acceptable in principle now, whereas it was a few years ago, notwithstanding the, the issues potentially you know, at appeal with, with you know, changing, changing our minds on something like that, that's 160 units that need to be found somewhere else. And in, in a time where there's a scarcity of sites in, in good locations around, I'd be really worried about the idea of Pushing another 160 units somewhere else because it's, it's the, you know the in, the inner city brownfield sites aren't going to magically appear. So I just want to I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't flag that. And I'm conscious that I said a few things like that tonight, and I don't want to bore members on on the subject. But I really do need to flag the importance of of, of this kind of thing strategically and 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 how we treat our allocated sites. Um, yeah, I think yeah. Sorry, I, I just. Think, just to check, it's 133 sorry. units. Just to, sorry, to, sorry, just to I'm sorry. Pick up on Ian's point. Yeah, sorry, sorry it's 130. It's 130. I'd usually have to find my my, uh, my mistake. Sorry, Steve. Thanks for correcting that. Okay. Um, there we go. That's all I wanted to say on the matter because I just think it's a, a an overarching matter of principle which we need to be mindful of. Thanks. Thank you. All right, uh, Councillor Wilson, Mark, your your hand is up next. Thank you very much, Chair. I, I'd like to make some observations. I mean. There are precedents in these areas for flats. I mean, there's a block of flats called Willowmere, around the corner almost from this development, and, and literally in a green setting as well. And to be honest, I don't think this is too different from Willowmere in terms of that development. Yes, I mean, there are flats going to be in this development, but they're very much needed. I was doing some searching on land, dock and flats and find very few to rent or to buy anywhere in this area. And yet there's a huge need. As you can look on the um, the um, actual um, report, there is a great need for one and two bedroom properties in this area. Um, and I'm sure that like Councillor Cowell, along with myself and other councillors, know by, you know, get a lot of people want housing within the Velcro Morgan, uh, and especially in these areas. You know, these areas are very much in demand. Um, Penarth Road, OK, admittedly, when I first moved to Penarth some 30 years ago, was incredibly a busy road. It's not as busy as it used to be. And I like to emphasise that as well. Uh, and yes, it's very near transport. Um, there's a good bus stop nearby. It's a very frequent service, as you know, for 92, 93, 94. 
uh, as Councillor Ernest no doubt knows, because I know you've got a good interest in transport, Councillor Ernest, and we're also very near um, that's Cogan Station as well. So, you know, and from Cogan Station, you must get anywhere in the United Kingdom um, via Cardiff, in particular via Cardiff Central. So there are good transport links to this area. Um, and I think that will reduce some of the demand for parking in this area. And really, and I think that's that's a good thing. And we also got to consider, of course, is what, what Ian Robertson rightly said is, if we don't develop this site, it put more pressure to develop other sites nearby. And there are green areas of land that could be developed in these areas. And I'm not saying they are, not saying they're not. But it put more pressure on them if, if we also, and also if this goes to appeal, Remember, it's in the LDP. You know, if it's in the LDP and we refuse it, we're refusing our own policy as a committee. And I think we need to be very careful about refusing something that goes against our own policy. So I'm, I'm very much I'd like to support and move recommendations support this application. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Wilson. Uh, right, Councillor Champion, you have your hand up as well. Uh, Yes, it was to pass comment rather than second or anything else. It was, um, we're looking at this as a full planning for the road coming in. And we've talked about children and play areas. And I think the applicant and the planners and highways need to look at perhaps shared services within this development. So the cars actually think about where they are rather than <laughs> having a road and a pavement on both sides. Anyway, that's a comment. Thank you, Charles. Yeah, I mean, I, I like I like uh, shared services as well. Uh, right, Councillor Williams, your hand is up. Sure, if uh, Councillor Champion seconded it, but if not, then I, I do. Yeah, no, he thank didn't. You. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for that, Eddie. Uh, Councillor Ernest, you have your hand up again. Is this uh, a new? Yes, Chair Chairman. Uh, I just wanted to make the point, if I may, that members sometimes are against an application on the basis of the information before us. Not necessarily that we are not in favour of, example, in this case, in favour of housing, but if you like the amount of housing and the ways in which that housing is being provided, and that that I think is reason why. Some members at, at, at any rate will vote either for or against an application. It doesn't rule out the fact that it, it's a it's a straight yes or no. I, I think we need to make that very clear. Thank yeah, you. I understand that, Anthony. Right. No other hands up. Then uh, there seems to be some dissent on this. So once again, I think we need to go for a, a vote. And uh, it's been moved and seconded so uh if if gareth if if democratic can do the honors again please okay uh councillor bruce are you for or against the application um i think there's too many questions so against okay councillor buckley are you for or against the application on the strength of the answers given i'm for okay. uh, councillor cave has left let's check in yeah, um, Councillor Champion, are you for or against the application? Uh, against the application as it stands. Councillor Kaup, are you for or against the application? Um, against. Councillor Drake, are you for or against the application? For. Councillor Ernest, are you for or against the application? I'm against the application. Councillor Gilligan, are you for or against the application? For. Councillor Hodges, are you for or against the application? Against. Councillor Johnson, are you for or against the application? I never been against. Councillor Payne, are you for or against the application? For the application. Councillor Perks, are you for or against the application? For the application. Councillor Perry, are you for or against the application? Against. Councillor Stallard, are you for or against the application? Obliged for. Councillor Thomas, are you for or against the application? I'm for. Councillor Williams, are you for or against the application? Councillor Williams? You're muted, Eddie. 
Thank you. Thank you. And Councillor Wilson, are you for or against the application? Four. Okay, Chair, that's nine, four seven, and seven eight, against. Nine. Thank you very much. That's carried uh, past. Uh, right, we move on now to the final one of the afternoon or evening now. Um, that's the Land at Lower Cosselston Farm in Lavernock, 2022, oblique 04. O oh, um, oh, triple one three, oblique RG three, and I think Ian, you're presenting on this, please. Yes, yes, sir. Thank you. Um, just firstly, I'll refer members to the the matters arising that we've had um, and have been circulated. Firstly, uh, comments from Barry and Vale, Friends of the Earth. Um, summary being that proposals are not advertised as departure from the development plan. No notification of Welsh Minister. Does um, as it being a departure, planning register entry showing waiting consultation responses and additional documents on the file, um, but no responses to those shown. Um, I won't go through the officer's response. Well, not in detail. I think I should probably just emphasise that the application was advertised as a departure, um, and the there is not a requirement to, to notify the minister for, for this um, for this development. I was going to come to another one, but I'll, I'll leave that till the end. There is another matter arising relating to um, to Welsh Government and the Minister. Um, the second matter arising relates to um, comments from Michael Garland of Keep Cross Meston Green, which um, summarises a, a number of concerns which are dealt with in the report relating to, you know, green wedge, um, contamination of land, surface water flooding, etc. Next, we have comments received um, from Councillor Marney, um, but from residents of Marconi Holiday site via Councillor Marney, um, a number of properties, about 20 or so, um, queries regarding road widening, highway safety, congestion and kind of highways related impacts. Um, and the final one, which is um, very important to raise is that um, we have received a letter from Welsh Government, um, which is a, um, a kind of a holding direction. So what that does, it's very similar, well, the same thing essentially as what we had with Model Farm um, last month. Welsh Government is saying that the Council cannot approve the application tonight. They can refuse the application. If members resolve to approve the application then we need to then let Welsh Government know that and Welsh Government will decide whether they want to call in the application for determination by the Minister or whether they are happy to let it revert back to the Council um, but we do need to um, sort of have a resolution on, on, on a decision tonight um, to inform that process for, for Welsh Government. Um, right that's the matters arising done. Um, I'll just share my screen with the uh, with the reports. Um, so yeah, this is. Um, am I sorry? Chairman, I'm not sure. Uh, Chairman, may I interrupt at this stage? Um, I think this, in in view of the information we've just received from uh, Stephen, I think there's a very good case for members to have a site visit here. The reason is that it's it's a large site. It's a very extensive development. Uh, there are many, many issues uh, involved, not least development in the Green Wedge. And I would like to call for a site visit if the committee approve that. I represent the adjacent ward, which is only 100 metres or so away from uh, the area we're talking about. And we shouldn't then, in my view, go into officers' reports and discussion if committee is minded to hold a site visit. And I, I think that would be a reasonable um, move in the context of this report tonight. Thank you. Right, th thank you for that intervention, Anthony. I'm not sure, I mean, I, I'm taking that as a point of order rather than anything else at the moment. Um, but uh, I'd like to make progress first on this. Um, uh, whether whether we actually need a site visit or not, as it maybe can be addressed within the uh, within the the discussion. Uh, Ian, do you want to just carry on? Uh, yes, yes, happy to. Um, let me share my my screen again. Um, okay, so this is uh, an application for a new special educational needs school on land south of Cosmeston Farm. Um, it represents the expansion upon the existing offer at um, Ascola Derry, um, which is sited adjacent to the St. Cyrus um, High 
uh, high school um, and would provide for up to 150 pupils. Um, it's let me scroll down to the layout. Um, it involves the provision of a kind of an inverted T-shaped building, um, two stories in height for a sort of relatively modern design. Um, the site layout includes um, parent um, drop-off and pick-up facilities, um, staff parking area, multi-use games area, artificial pitch, and a, a, a grassed area. Um, the access would be off Fort Road. Um, now this has been a, you know, a an issue of it, you know, a lot of um, deliberation and consideration by our highways colleagues, and um, but we're in a position now where the access is considered to be, um, a, you know, a fundamentally safe access, benefiting from the necessary visibility and, and geometry, um, and wouldn't result in unacceptable queuing either along Fort Road or with, within the kind of the primary road adjacent to the site. Possibly the main issue to consider here. I mean, it's up to, to members to decide what they feel the main issue is, but. I would argue maybe the main issue here is the fact that the site is located within a green wedge. Um, I'm just scrolling down now to a plan from the office report that shows the site in the context of a green wedge. I think it's quite illustrative. Um, here's the site here in red. Um, where I'm hovering my arrow now, that's the kind of the southern extent of built development as it exists now. This land here between the existing housing and the green wedge is um, a housing allocation um, in, in the local development plan. Um, and then we have the site here. The land hatched in green shows the full extent of the green wedge. Now, the purpose of the green wedge is to um, sort of preserve openness um, across the, you know, across the, the, the countryside and to prevent the coalescence between settlements. Um, and for that reason, planning policies on green wedges are quite restrictive um, and they suggest that you didn't generally approve development which compromises the open nature of the green wedge unless there are exceptional circumstances that justify it. Now the green wedge, I won't go into it in massive amount of detail now because it, it's, it's in the report and I'm, and I'm sure there'll be debate on it but we've considered the impact of this proposal within the green wedge and what it would mean for the, you know, the functionality of the green wedge um, we're of the view quite strongly that this wouldn't result in the coalescence between the settlements and wouldn't significantly affect openness of the, of the land between the two settlements. We have to consider whether there are material considerations which outweigh any harm to the green wedge. Um, now, we've done this balancing exercise in the report and it is a matter of judgment, but what we are looking at here is a, a degree of harm and to the openness of the application site. But weighed against that is the provision of a critically needed um, special educational needs school. Um, and in officers' opinions, the any harm to the green wedge, which is given significant weight, is decisively outweighed by the, the, the need and the benefits that would result from the provision of this educational facility. That's just a summary. Um, I'll leave it to, to, to the speakers now and to, to members, um, and then we can pick up on these points going forward. Thank Thank you, Ian. Uh, thank, thank you, Ian Robinson. Uh, Councillor Perry, we've had three speakers before we get to the debate. So um, the first speaker is Councillor Marnie, who is also the local member. Uh, uh, Kevin, are you there? Yes, can you hear me? You're oh. a bit quiet. You, I don't know if you can I'll, I'll boost your as much as I can. Is that better for you? That's, that's far better, yes. Thank you. Uh, normal rules apply. Three minutes uh, starting from when you start to speak. And you'll be given a one minute warning. Okay, I'll point out that three minutes is uh, totally inadequate and is a, a major drawback in, in the planning situations. I'll then have no right to reply to what I'm sure the uh, planning department will be trying to Pick to pieces my argument. You are using well, your but, time. I know I am. Um, Escaladeri, let's look at the history of uh, Escaladeri, of course, only opened in 2014. Well, who would have thought that seven years later, eight years later, um, we'd need an expansion? Well, everybody I'd have thought, except, of course, the Vale of Morgan, who put the existing Escaladeri on a site that can't be expanded. Total incompetence in many people's uh, views, to be honest with you. We've just had a reason. You asked in a, an earlier hearing here, give me a reason, give me a reason why we should oppose this. In your own papers, and Ian Robinson's uh, summing up there, um, he's just given it to you. Planning policy Wales, Green Belt, Green Wedge. The construction of new buildings in green belt or wedge is inappropriate. There were one or two exceptions, none of which 
consider a school. It's recreational and uh, perhaps agricultural. Number one, straight away, when the um, Vela Glamorgan are opposed in applications, they're quoting all this stuff as a no, no, you can't, and quoting this to them. When it suits them, apparently we can just ride over it, even though it's in their own notes. Outside the settlement boundary, but only just outside the settlement boundary. Well, what's the point of a settlement boundary? Every time you nip into it, oh, it's only a little bit more, it's only a little bit more, it's only a little bit more. We say about the need for it. The green wedge and the green belt is also a green lung, let's not forget. Um, I do note, even in their own notes, and it's been mentioned by Ian Robinson, 93% openness is quoted on their site. Openness? They've included the car park and the massive drop-off zone as openness and quoted that as some sort of you're, you're, you're building over green land but openness having a tarmac car park and drop off some well let's tarmac over snowdonia and some of our country parks and say it's okay it's a hundred percent it's total nonsense isn't it um we then go on to the zone flood zone of lavanock road outside we've had reservations from nrw from the council drainage section we know that that road floods it's flooded many, many times since I've been a council in the 11 years I've been there. The Sully Brook can't accommodate the flooding and the council refused to dredge it anymore because in their own official's words, we didn't send any more water down Sully Brook, down to uh, Sully Moors because it would flood the chemical plants and the businesses there. Another reason. Any um, uh, construction that needs a refuge, a flood refuge for the student here, is absolutely ludicrous. Who on earth, what council would ever vote for that? Bear in mind that many of these students are autistic and any upset in their routine, we know what some of the results of that can be. To actually plan a flood refuge says it all. Um, we have the entrance in Fort Road. Three minutes, Chair. This is, uh, thank you. This is why thank, we must... Thank you, Councillor oh. Mahoney. That's your, time. That's, your, that's your time up, I think. Well, that's uh, a joke, quite fair. Thank you, Councillor Marnie. Your time things, is yeah. up. You're Absolute now talking over the joke. chair. Please, will you stop? Right, will joke. you stay on there? Are there any... Um, Councillor Hodges, you have your hand up. Is that a point of clarification? No, just... Chairman, can I just say that I, I asked the committee whether we have a site visit. It, it's normal practice if you have a site, if you have a site visit, not to even discuss the application. We now moved into the realms of discussing the application in detail, inviting comments from members, and we, you've not even looked at the question uh, of the site council, visit. Can, Councillor Ernest, actually, I have looked at the question of the site visit. I can, you know that I, uh, um, you, you know me well, you know that I favour site visits. Uh, yes, on do. this occasion, Good. I did not think it merited a site visit because uh, it, basically we'd just be looking at an empty field. So, yeah, uh, yeah but you've so, not no, stated I did, that. I, you, I know, you've not stated I, that, Chairman. I'm, st I'm stating it now. I, I did say we get onto it, and I'm, but I'm stating it now, and I did, I did, uh, did, I did conclude that it would not be uh, beneficial. For, for the committee to have a site visit on this occasion. Councillor Hodges, are you, are you, is your hand up for a point of clarification? Uh, not quite, Chair. I was going to second Anthony Ernest's uh, request for a site visit. Right, well, that, quite, that now, he's, that he's, now he's isn't... Quite, no, he's quite right. That uh, when a request is made, that should be dealt with first. Well, I think I've just dealt with it. Councillor Perry, I is this a point of Chairman. clarification? I think not. I, I think I'll ask Democratic Services for a view on that, Chairman. OK, well, well, we'll get on to that. Can I just check? Can we just finish this part? Councillor Perry, is this a point of clarification? Yes, it is. Well, two two things. I either support a site visit as well. And um, yeah, I'm disappointed with another site visit. Uh, I have a, a point of clarification from um, Kevin Mahoney, uh, and that is regarding what his issue is with the entrance off Fort Road. And that's exactly the point where you need a site visit. It's no more than a single car track. Right, thank you for that. Um, right, Democratic. Can, uh, or, or James, can I ask for your view on Councillor Ernest's request for a site visit and Councillor Hodges' seconding of that? 
I think it's it's fair enough to second the request by councillor during this chair. There's no protocol covering the, the site visits, so, so chair, it's, it's up to you how you manage the, the debate tonight. So chair, if if you feel it's appropriate to take it um, or whatever part of the debate chair, that's down to you as chair. But there's there's no protocol that covers it. OK, thank you. James, do you have my, a view? My my understanding is that um, site visits are at the discretion of the chair. That's what I thought. And I, as I said, I had to, I had considered it and decided that it would not be beneficial. We would not get a better context than we already have. Most of us already know this site anyway and know this area very, very well. I mean, I, I'm down that area a few times a week. So um as i say, as you say it is it is it is a matter for the chair not for the uh not for the committee uh councillor champion do you have a point of clar clarification for what uh councillor marnie was saying yeah, clarification of what you just said i don't know the site okay thank you um moving on then uh, and I've ruled on that, so uh, I, 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 I don't I don't intend to con continue with that. Um, I'd like to get this carried on. Uh, the next speaker we have uh, this evening is Council uh, is Christopher Britton. Mr. Britton, I believe you're the head teacher. Are you there? Hello, Chris. Same rules apply. Three minutes, and uh, it, uh, it starts when you start, and you'll be given a minute warning. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thanks for the opportunity to speak to the committee. Um, I'd like to talk about the issues that we're facing at the current school and the uh, and the issues that pupils are facing as well. Um, the children, young people at the school aged three to 19 and their needs cannot be met in any other schools. We are, in fact, the provision for other schools. We shouldn't be regarded as in competition with them. We are part of those schools and my fellow head teachers recognise that. So when they have pupils they can't cope with and can't meet their needs, they come to us. We have children at the site who are very ill, some with life threatening, some will die in our care. There are children who have syndromes you will never have heard of. And there are children who are confused by the world. There are children who don't speak. And there are children who are profoundly autistic, many of whom have probably been locked away many years ago. Yet this authority, to be fair to you as councillors and, and, and the officers, has given them and their families hope. And that's something I've had comments on from across the across the country and across the world since the television series of the number of people who wished they could have been in a school like like the one that has been provided for our children or even that their children could come to them. Unfortunately, and no one knows why, there are more and more of these children, but there are responsibility and we're very successful in preparing them for the rest of their lives. For some, a tragically short life and for many, a life of challenges that you and I cannot imagine. We've reached a stage where we could do no more on the current site. It takes 40, I'll give you some examples. It takes 45 minutes at each end of the day just to get all the pupils in and back out again into their transports. The children eat in corridors as there's no dining space and lunchtime takes almost two hours. We have children in wheelchairs who refuse food and drink because they're afraid that due to the lack of hygiene rooms, they'll soil themselves. They won't be able to get changed in time because there are queues at the hygiene rooms. We just don't have enough space for them. They're in classes whose numbers exceed guidelines and the space that was built for them. And it's not just the pupils, but it's the staff as well. We've now doubled the number of staff that the site was One initially minute. intended for. Thank you. So they have to go somewhere. And if not to our school, and I say ours because it's all of us, then they have to go to providers outside in private providers at eye water and costs. So having the spaces needed in this new build will make sure we make better use of the resources we've already got at the school so that we can actually use them across both sites. So it's important that it's close to us. None of these children has to be as they are, but it's our duty, I think, to continue to ensure they have the best life chances we can all give them. If we don't get approval tonight, we'll be in crisis as a school and as an authority in September 24, as we won't be able to complete the project in time. So on behalf of all of them, I implore you to approve the application this evening. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Mr. Britton. Uh, any points of clarification, please, from members of the committee? Oh, there you go. Councillor Perks, you have your hand up. Thank you, Chair. I just wanted to ask um, the um, ages of uh, the children that will go, if this gets approved, that will go to the second site, please. Well, they will be primary age, primary age. Um, so, and most likely um, upper primary. So, um, seven to eleven. 
Okay, th thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Perry, you have your hand up. Uh, yeah, good, good evening. Um, it, it seems to be a theme here in the Vale of Council where we have... An Sorry, here. Ian, Ian, you're yeah. asking a point of clarification. Yeah. What, this what, isn't what, the what debate my, yet. What my clarification would be, um, there's an urgency here. Why is there an urgency? How long have you been asking for a new building, a new site? Um, pro probably um, your officers are better able to answer, but I know this has been quite a few years in, in progress. Um, and as I understand it, and I'm, I'm not a planning officer, there have been numerous delays through Natural Resources Wales, the nature of the site and, and everything else. There have had to be tests, et cetera, done, some that can only be done at certain times of the year. And I'm sure Ian can explain this better than I can. But certainly um, it's been a, it, 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 it's been years, three, probably three years, I would guess, something like that. Um, and I, I don't believe the delays are the 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 local authorities making. I think it's from all the information you have to gather together. But I'm sure that um, Ian could answer that better than me, Councillor. Thank you. Right. Uh, there are no other points of clarification. So thank you very much, Mr. Britton, for your contribution. Um, you can go off camera now, mute, and uh, we'll I'll call on the next speaker. Uh, third speaker on this is Mr. Davis, David Davis. Are you there? Yes, there you are. Yeah, good evening. Yeah, it's the same rules apply and you've got three minutes too. <laughs> okay, thanks. Since the opening, uh, since its opening in 2014, Escola Derry has truly transformed special education in the Vale of Glamorgan and has a, had an immeasurably positive impact on the children and young people who have attended the school. Over the last 10 years, there has been a significant rise across Wales and beyond the numbers of children and young people with ALN requiring specialist provision. This has resulted in a huge growth in the pupils requiring places at Escoladeri. LA officers have worked in partnership with the school to increase capacity and meet this increase in demand. Every inch of space that has, can be developed has been developed on the site. In 2020, the Council agreed a strategy to transform special education in the Vale of Glamorgan in order to meet projected future demand and best meet need. The strategy consists of three key elements. Firstly, the development of new provision to replace the pupil referral unit. That will be opening in September 23. Secondly, to, to establish specialist resource bases within mainstream schools. Those have already been successfully established. And the third and final key element of the strategy was the development of this new satellite provision to Escoladeri, known as YYD2. Originally, YYD2 was planned to open in September 2023. The current delay has meant that in order to meet the demand for places, we are considering utilising a, a vacated primary school, which is Victorian in nature. This is not sustainable for any length of time. And any further delay in moving the project forward would result in the council not being able to fulfil its statutory duty to provide an appropriate education for our most vulnerable children and young people. The proposed site is ideally located to ensure that new provision can be delivered in the most cost effective manner. Being close to the One main minute. school, the specialist teams developed at YYD will be able to work across both sites and pupils educated on the new site will also be able to benefit from the state of the art facilities at YYD without the expense of trying to recreate such provision on a new site. I am aware that the planning process has been a difficult one and appreciate that all concerned have been wrestling with a range of important issues. I also appreciate the need to spend time considering all the implications fully in order to mitigate any negative impacts wherever possible. However, I would urge you to look favourably on this application and to recognise that the benefits of building YYD2 far outweigh any negatives. To refer to a famous quote, the true measure of any society can be found in how it treats its most vulnerable members. The children and young people with complex additional needs resident in the Vale of Glamorgan absolutely need and deserve this provision. Thank you. Three minutes. Thank you, Mr Davis. Any points of clarification from members of the committee? I see no hands. In that case, I now open the... Meeting to discussion, uh, Ian. Ian, 
you want to cover yeah. something? Is it, okay, is it okay if I just come back on a couple of the issues from Councillor Marnie earlier before oh, the, yeah, the, the debate was on? That, 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 that's certainly. fine. Um, yeah, I want to give clarity to a couple of points. Planning Policy Wales um, talks about green wedges in some detail, as I mentioned, and as Councillor Marnie mentioned. The types of developments that Councillor Marnie referred to, such as, um, I think, recreation, things like that, there's, there's a list of them in Planning Policy Wales, and those are listed as being... Um, a number of potential acceptable developments, you know, needs in the countryside. Um, Planning Policy Wells doesn't say those are the only things that can be acceptable and it's not an exhaustive list. What it does go on to say is other developments might be acceptable where there's harm to the green wedge if there are exceptional circumstances. Um, so I just want to make that clear. Um, it's a, as I said earlier, it's a matter of judgment and, and this is my opinion. I can't think of a more exceptional or more worthy exception than the development we're looking at here for the reasons given by Mr Britton and um, and, and David Davis um, and that's why we've weighed in favour as it is. So I just wanted to flag that Planning Policy Wales doesn't say you can't do this, it says you've got to have a very good reason and in officers opinion this is about as good a reason as there could be. Absolutely, thank you very much. Discussion, anything from any members of the committee who want to Add anything, Councillor Champion, you have your hand up. Um, looking on page 193 of the report, planning report, you can find that here. Council, consultations. We got that. Yeah. At the top of the page, there is a sort of view. So is some of that housing planned housing and not ex existing? And is this the yellow site, the school? And what's that on the on the yellow site? Yeah, so the yeah, that on that image, shall I shall I share my screen so all members can, can see this? Please. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. So that, it's this image here, isn't it, on page 193? Yeah. yeah, so that is a, just a, a representation of what the allocated site might look like if built out. Um, so there's, there's, a, you know, there's a planning application in at the moment for the development of this land, which shows it's outlined, but it shows um, housing in these in these parcels here where, where you can see the housing. Um, this is the school site proposed in that adjacent um, allocation, and yes, this is a representation of the building. Now, you will note the 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 T is the wrong way round. You know, it, the, the way it's shown on the on the the layout plan I showed you earlier, it's the little numbers at the top. Um, but it's just that that's broadly speaking where the building would be. Um, so I think this is the purpose of this is to show kind of the relationship between this building, school site here, and other housing to show how it would relate to the settlement. Um, sorry if that was misleading in the report. Could you just confirm whether you couldn't have put the new school where you've got some of the housing? No, there's, there's, there's not space. So the, the there's this land here is allocated for a um, for housing and you know a, a general needs school, not a, a special educational needs school. Um, to put this here within the the housing allocation would have put a, a huge dent in the in the in the housing numbers, which. You know, some Not people may say that. some people may say, well, you know, have less housing then. But the, the point is this site, along with all the other allocations in the LDP, are are programmed to deliver what the, the LDP and Welsh Government identify as being the necessary level of housing in the Vale of Glamorgan over the plan period. So if you take two hectares out of this site, that puts that puts a very big dent in that. So that's why land wasn't available with, within them um, within this site. Okay. OK, Councillor Champion. Uh, yes, thank right. you. Next hand up then is Councillor Ernest. Yes, thank you, Chairman. Yes, I, I, I too was interested in this uh, um, mock-up on page 193 because that's what it is. It's it's not a real uh, aerial photograph at all. It's, I'll call it an artist's impression, for want of a better word, and I don't think that's a good document to put for a planning committee when none of that other uh, housing development has even been discussed or approved yet. Um, and again, we're showing the, the school on the site in the yellow uh, frame, which is interesting, but not realistic. 
I, for one, am not against the principle of the school. And I, I say, if I may, to Chris Britton, who I've known for a long time, and to whose school I contributed when I was chairman of the council, I gave funds that I'd raised through fundraising to the school. And so I recognise the work that the school does. But I have to look at this from a, as a member of the planning committee tonight. And I look at that and say, this is breaking the principles, the council's own principles on breaking into the green wedge. Now, officers will say with good justification that there are good reasons for breaking into the green wedge. But maybe we'll get another housing developer coming along saying, well, look, you're awfully short of, of land for uh, social housing. There's a nice field next door, one behind. We'll find good reason why we shouldn't use those fields as well. Again, taking further bite out of the green wedge. I see this as, as a breaking of the, co the coalescence uh, between Sully and Penarth, which is so important. Unfortunately, this development also, Chairman, takes no account of the traffic um, impacts. The Most of the traffic, I suspect, will come onto Lavnock Road to the east. In other words, towards Penarth. You, you've got the impact of Cosperton Lakes Country Park. A lot of traffic flow there, and you will have it two times, twice a day, Monday to Friday. You will have uh, vehicles coming and entering um, uh, YYD2. But most of these vehicles will be either taxis or minibuses, relatively few private cars, and they're a different type of transport. Yes, there is public transport on the road, uh, the 94 bus to Barry, as well as the 88, but um, people have to cross the road, and I don't see that there's sufficient mitigation within the proposal for us tonight for pupils or indeed parents having to cross Lavnock Road, a busy A-class road. We talked about Penarth Road earlier. We're talking about the other side of Penarth, Lavnock Road tonight. So for that reason, Chairman, I have a lot of doubts about this plan. I'm glad that the Welsh, the Welsh Government have called the plan in because whatever we do tonight, it's not going to determine it, uh, but it'll simply uh, act maybe as a holding um, requirement. And I recognise the other points that uh, other councillors who represent the ward and indeed those nearby have made tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Ernest. Uh, Councillor Perks is the next hand up. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, I just wanted to say that, you know, I feel that, you know, we've been looking for a site, I think, if I remember rightly, being on the Learning and Culture Committee um, when we discussed the need for a second site that um, they've been looking for a second site for a number of uh, number of years. Uh, I think, you know, that the, the council has recognised that we do need to expand um, to YYD2, um, you know, is, is important as well. And part of the planning for, um, you know, the sort of education of the, the children who have um, special educational needs. Um, and I think the sighting of, of this actually you know it isn't that far away from the main site that it's accessible to teaching and specialist um staff that they have um on the main site as well um also i mean sort of a clarification if the children are uh, generally going to be transported to the site it's not going to be um like um you know, an everyday uh, sort of primary school, if if you like, it's not going to have the same number of parents dropping off and collecting the children that, you know, there'd be more um, if they're transported on minibuses and uh, such like. The transport will actually be less um, than you would expect in um, a school where um, children who don't have additional learning needs go. Um, so I don't know whether there's a sort of any clarification around that as well, but thank you. Thank you, Councillor Perks. Uh, we have, uh, I still got hands going up, Councillor Payne. Helen. Hi, thank you very much, Chair. Um, I just wanted clarification on the, because I know I've had lots of dealings with a scholarary in terms of the young people I work with in my day job. Um, there's never really an issue now because the frontage now is such that it accommodates coaches, minibuses, cars and people who walk to school. So I just want a clarification on that in terms of the plan 
I think that's Ian. In the, the frontage of the school, then, there will be adequate turning places and parking places for school transport, I'm assuming. On a point of... Yeah, that, that, that's why I'm happy to answer So that. a similar yeah. arrangement at YYD2 as to YYD1? It's, my, my understanding is it's not it's not designed for large coaches because we've been advised that that's not the nature of um of, of trans you know big coaches that's not the nature of transport that would would be taking children to this school but it is being designed to cater for the vehicles that, that will be used to transport children here the, you know the, the circulation space and the drop off and pick up you know spaces the the, the aggregate you know, area of um of drop off and pick up and the and the star spaces is significantly more than you would get in most schools because of right. the, the special nature of it and and the and the different needs of it. You know, we don't generally um, encourage large drop off and parent, particularly parent drop off and pick up facilities in every school because it, it, it encourages driving. So, for example, the schools on the waterfront, um, you know, you want to be encouraging people to go there by active travel means as far as possible. There's a recognition here that that's not going to be possible in the same way that it would be for yeah. um, for, for most other schools. Um, so that's why the, you know, the, the land take is slightly bigger um, and why the, the, the infrastructure is, is more comprehensive in that respect. Yeah, and I know that the transport is staggered in the morning. Everybody doesn't pile in at the same time. It's very, very strategic and really well planned. Um, yeah, and no, I just wanted clarification on that, really, that it's the same kind of arrangement, so it won't have as much impact as people think it will. Yeah, I think, you know, it has, be, it has been dealt with in the report and the traffic associated with it has been considered by our, our Hobbies colleagues. And no no doubt having the school accessed off Fort Road would potentially result in in a, in a in a bit more queuing at the end of Fort Road than is currently the case but that's not to say that it would be a significant or an unacceptably high level of, of queuing um yeah while I sorry while I just while I'm speaking can I just flag one thing which I omitted earlier which I'm just keen to make sure is, is mentioned for completeness when I went through the matters arising I omitted to say there'd been a second matter arising from um uh, friends of the earth it has been circulated to members so members will have seen it um there was extra points made in respect of the need for the site in the green wedge and um ecological reasons to do with bats and dormice it's it's information members have but i just wanted for the avoidance of doubt me to flag that so that it's clear to members that i've referred to all of the matters arising that we have submitted okay thank you uh, and thank can you. i just uh, clarify on, some, uh, yeah, change yes. something actually on my declaration and a few other people's declaration, I think we said item four and it's actually item eight. It's item eight. Just for the record. Uh, the, the fourth uh, thing. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah fine. Thank you. I think we all we, we all know what was going on. Um, Ian Buckley's next hand up. Councillor Buckley. Ian. Thank you, Chair. A question for you, Ian. Um, the, some of the queries raised by the residents of the Marconi have been at and turning areas within the school. Uh, looking at the map on page 91, is, um, I'm not sure if it's just a bit too small, I can't make it out. Is Fort Road being widened up into the access to the school? Because it looks like two lanes there, not not just a single. Yes, there is there is widening, yeah. The scale of the plan doesn't enable you to see that um, as clearly <laughs> as you might if it was bigger. But yes, there is widening at the, um, at the, at the front end of Fort Road. So that that would further alleviate the the uh, objections raised by the Marconi residents. It, it would, in our view, albeit I think yeah. um, I think a, a, you know a number of the points raised by the residents relate to kind of just the you know c congestion, the yeah. highway safety issues associated with traffic. As in, if you have more traffic, yeah. you might have more risk of a highway safety issue. But the you know but the, the widening of Fort Road and the nature of the junction are such that they're you know they're they're fundamentally our highway colleagues have reviewed them. They're the view yeah. that they're, they're fundamentally safe. Arrangements. Thank, yeah, thank you, mate. Yeah, without widening the road, they, all their points would have been uh, hundred percent valid. But I think that alleviates most of them. Thank you, mate. Thank you, Councillor Buckley. Uh, can I can I just add to that? I remember the, dis the debate and discussion around the original YID uh, on on e exactly this point. Uh, it was the point raised by by many residents, uh, uh, particularly along Sully Lanes there. Uh, who were very concerned about that. It has not been an, it proved to be an issue because of all the off-road turning, parking uh, and movements uh, within the within the site, um, uh, which, which so that the fears were were not realised. Uh, right, Councillor Williams, your your hand is up. Thank you, Chair. And 
Um, as there doesn't appear to be a rush of people putting their hands up now, I'd like to move officers' recommendations. Thank you, Eddie. Do I have a second for that? I'll second it. Thank oh, you. Sorry, I'll second seconders. it. We've got seconders all over. Thank you very yeah, there much. There was indeed. a motion to um, defer as well. Should we take that first? Oh yes, there was. Um, we we can we can take that first. Was it? I can't remember. Seconded. Yeah, true. It's it's um, as councillor Ernest. I think. Um, double check. I think yes, councillor Perry. I, it was deferred for Perry a site seconded. visit, uh, chairman. Yeah, deferred for site visit. I think it was seconded. Yeah. Okay. I'm I'm assuming that councillor Hodges, your hand is the second, is it? Uh, well, it was 20 odd minutes ago and it still is, Chairman. Yeah. Thank you very much. Councillor Perks, is your hand up for a reason now or is that his legacy? Legacy, Chair. Right. Thank you. Right. In that case, we'll go to the vote on deferment um, and then, well, we'll see what happens after that. Vote on yeah. can, can, deferment for a site visit, Chairman. Correct, Chairman. Deferment for a site visit. Well, I, 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 okay. well, I'm not that's, sure that's, that's, a, a that's in order. I'm not sure if that's in order. Can I? Can I just check? Okay. I mean, I don't mind about a site visit, but but I don't see the need for it. Um, well, I, I think it, if I may say so, Chairman, I don't want to talk across you, but it'd be very helpful, and particularly as some members have said they don't know the site well. Yeah, Even those but, who know the site well will have the opportunity to see exactly what's going to be put in place. And bearing in mind the the application already twenty William twenty one million pounds over budget, I think it would be useful if we yeah. saw what we're proposing to build there. The, lo the longer we go on, the more the more it's going to go over. <laughs> Prices aren't coming down. Um, I understand that. Yes. Yeah. Ian Robinson, you have your hand up. Yeah, thanks, Chair. Um, I, I appreciate fully. It's a, it's a matter for members um, to decide if they if they individually feel they need a site visit. I did want to flag that there are timing issues here, which are are not irrelevant to to um, the whole the whole the whole project, particularly in terms of its delivery and and meeting educational needs. So I just wanted to make sure that members were aware that site visits and the the impact that has on the delivery of the of the educational facility then they're not two separate things and um it's material to to consider that in my opinion all right thank you ian um i'd like to take advice again from james please if you're still around where are you james hello hello james yeah hi yeah. Are you there um yeah, no, yeah. yeah um as I understand it, so the, the, the need or or the decision to make a site visit it lies with myself prior to it, it, it prior does. to the it does yeah it does I think where but also I suppose it's if if members are minded to move motions for deferral then they they can do so um, obviously generally that would the with site visits there's, there's it would generally be that the, the the chair would make the decision prior to the meeting and um, we have had situations previously where motions have then been raised in relation to sort of deferrals for site visits which right. can then either be accepted by the chair or or go to a vote um i suppose that yeah the, it would be helpful if if motion if uh requests for site visits came in beforehand and then you could consider them prior to the meeting but um you, you can take a vote on it yeah in that case um we will go to a vote on that oh councillor perry you have your hand up yeah i'm here again yeah so if we did defer i i i thought it was this was going to the welsh government potentially to decide so if we didn't decide to that tonight there wouldn't be a delay because they can't start tomorrow if we decide in favor Abs absolutely so so, we, so the, it, 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 it would it would it would it would mean a delay to the start of the construction yeah which would be a problem can i can i just flag chat that i my understanding is that welsh government won't consider whether they want to call it in until there's a resolution from here so if you defer here for a month that pushes back the 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 the, the point that welsh government will start to consider that so it, it would have it it would 
it would alter things because they won't I don't believe I mean I'm, I'm this is my what I'm advised of previously that they they want a recommendation a resolution so they can then decide whether they want to call it in um so that whole thing we push back so you'd have the site visit delay and then the delay of the call in consideration as well because so I thought we model farm we could have deferred and they could have made a decision first so now we're getting different advice in two different meetings from different people no, so no 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 can I it's yeah. a... so it's so it's a different thing so if if they um a decision was refused Welsh government wouldn't then call in a decision that had been refused what Welsh government has said is they've got a holding direction so that if a proposed if a resolution to approve the application was made at that point Welsh government would then consider whether they wanted to call it in before it formally got a decision notice issued on the back of the approval at committee right, and this is different then yeah and it's exactly the same it's exactly the same yeah but that's <laughs> that that, that no, is the, the, the process I, I i'm not sure if there was some confusion last time but that's the the process is that the welsh government's holding direction only oh, kicks yeah. in in the event that the app an application is approved by the council if an application is refused by the council, the Welsh government won't call it in because it's been refused. Right. Yeah, but we're talking about deferment and if we've not made a decision. I, I think the confusion is the one with the model farm is that it was a private application, not a public application, not, 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 not a council mm. one. And that therefore was going, uh, the possibility was that that could go to appeal. Is that not yeah, the difficulty? That, that, that may be where the confusion is. So on. Yeah. On model farm, I suppose you had the position whereby if a decision wasn't made, the applicant could appeal against non-determination of the application if it had then fallen outside the time limit set in legislation for making the decision. But whilst that, that appeal goes to PEDU, which is an arm of Welsh Government, it's not the same as the Welsh Government holding direction. Thank you for that, James. In that case, Nick, you have your hand up again. Is it? I'm proposing that we move yeah, to a vote yes. on the deferment. Yes, Chairman. Um, I mean, a lot of the decision I suspect about whether we uh, actually agree a deferment comes about because of the suggestion that the scheme uh, would be delayed. I, I appreciate that. Have we any idea how long Welsh Government would, uh, would take over this? Because um, it does not act quickly. We've seen that over a number of issues. Um, I mentioned an incinerator in Barry, for example. Uh, you know, these things grind slow. Um, there's no reason why we can't take a little longer with this. And in fact, I think the onus should be upon us as a planning authority, where the application actually comes from our own council, that we are seen to do this right and fairly and properly. And I think as someone who doesn't know the site at all, I would like to see it. And I feel then I would make a better decision. Uh, I hope people don't think that uh, I'm against the, the, the whole idea of the school. I'm certainly not. But we're here as a planning committee and we need to look at this on planning grounds. And I would be better informed with a site visit and a deferral. Well, Thank I'm you. proposing Ian Rob... Oh, we've still got hands coming up. Uh, Ian Robinson. Uh, I just wanted to say, I I know I, I can't advise definitively how long Welsh government would take. I think it's fair to say this isn't this is not like the the um the site in Barry, um, and I wouldn't have any expectation that that it would take that amount of time. I think the 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 holding direction request was received very. My understanding is very late in the day, so Welsh government sent a letter, um, because you know the the timing of that, um, and. That doesn't necessarily infer it will or won't be called in or or that it will take a long time. I think it, the only thing I would point I, I would make, which I made before, is that a deferral, then a call in is inevitably going to take longer than just a call in. Okay. Um, I, I propose now not to take any more discussion on this particular part of it because I, I, I want to go to a vote on the deferral. Can we please make make progress? Uh, so if Democratic will please start. Sorry, Helen and Sandra. But if Democratic that is what I was going to say, Chair. 
Yeah. So vote. likewise, move to a vote, yeah. please. Yeah, that's OK, then. Democratic, Gareth, okay, chair, this can is you for, take the um, vote, please? This is for, for or against deferring, yeah. OK, Chair. Um, Councillor Bruce has left us, so I'll start with Councillor Buckley. Are you for or against the site visit? I'm against the site visit and deferral. Okay, Councillor Cave has left us too. Councillor Champion, are you uh, for or against the site visit? I'd like to defer, please. Okay. Councillor Drake, are you for or against deferral? Against. Councillor Ernest, are you for or against deferral? Or deferral. Councillor Gilligan, are you for or against deferral? Against. Councillor Hodges, are you for or against deferral? For. Councillor Johnson, are you for or against deferral? Applied for. Councillor Payne, are you for or against deferral? Against. Councillor Perks, are you for or against deferral? Against. Councillor Perry, are you for or against deferral? Precautionary principle and for deferral. Councillor Stallard, are you for or against deferral? An been against deferral. Councillor Thomas, are you for or against deferral? I'm against the deferral. Councillor Williams, are you for or against deferral? Against the deferral. And Councillor Wilson, are you for or against deferral? Against deferral. OK, that's chair, that's nine against and five for. Thank you. That's what I make it to. Um, in that case, I see no need for further debate on this. Uh, can we move now to, uh, can, can, I, uh, can we have someone, oh, we already have officers' recommendations, uh, uh, don't we? Someone's moved? Yes, Chair. Yeah. Moved yeah. In second yeah. 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 Uh, yeah, in that case, can we move straight to the vote on that, please? Okay, Chair. Um, okay, I'll start with Councillor Buckley. Councillor Buckley, are you for or against the application? For the application. Councillor Cave's left us. Councillor Champion, you for or against the application? For the application. Councillor Cope has left us. Councillor Drake, are you for or against the application? For. Councillor Ernest, are you for or against the application? Abstain. Okay. Councillor Gilligan, are you for or against the application? For the application. Councillor Hodges, are you for or against the application? I'll have to abstain, Chairman. Councillor Johnson, are you for or against application? Uh, uh, Maxwell, abstain. Councillor Payne, are you for or against application? Councillor for Payne. the application. Thank you. Councillor Perks, are you for or against application? For the application. Councillor Perry, are you for or against application? I won't abstain, I'll, I'll vote against on the basis. Okay. Councillor Starlad, are you for or, or against application? Obliged for. Councillor Thomas, are you for or against application? For. Councillor Williams, are you for or against application? For. And Councillor Wilson, are you for or against application? For. Okay, Chair, that's 10 for, Ten. one against, and three abstentions. That's what I make it to. Thank you very much, Gareth. Right. Um, that's supported then. Um, Agenda item nine, any items which the chair has decided are urgent, part one, I have none, nor do I have any other part two. Thank you very much, everybody, for your contributions this evening. It's been a, a, a good discussion on, 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 on all the applications, and um, I wish you all a very good evening. Glad you think so, Chairman. What, what's left of it? <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you Chairman. Chairman. Everyone. Good Thank night. You.